What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some insane battles in the Open Great League, running double Hippos, since both Hippopotas and Hippowdon gained access to Sand Attack this season. I'm also running Shadow Zapdos in the lead to cover for most of the Pokemon my backline's going to struggle against, but a huge issue for this team is of course going to be Ice Types. But don't you worry, I was still able to fight back against and beat a few Ice Types in this video. So with that being said, let's get into the question of the day. What has been your favourite team to run this season? Season. It doesn't have to be for any of the open leagues, it can be for a themed cup. Just let me know in the comment section down below. And with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so heading into the first battle, each Shadow Zapdos into Wigglytuff. So neutral lead, but of course, Charm going to do huge damage here. You can see Zapdos has very little defense. So what I'm going to do, build up to a Thunderbolt, throw the Drill Peck, and if we grab a shield, which we do, I'm now going to swap into my Shadow Hippowdon. Now, I want to mention that this is like the third or fourth time I try to record the commentary here. I keep getting Hippopotas, like, <laughs> it's really hard to say when you're trying to do, like, fast esports commentary. So I'm just going to refer to them as Big Hippo and Little Hippo for the rest this video and here big hippo gonna go for scorching sands it doesn't quite get the ko but one more sand attack gets that ko there and we're even able to make it to a rock weather ball and if the opponent hasn't been counting or doesn't know the counts they're gonna end up using their final shield and now little hippo can come in i'm not gonna throw straight away because of course body sand will not get the ko from this range of course they're now gonna go for an icy wind debuff my attack i'm not gonna throw yet i'm gonna wait to see what that third and final pokemon is and it ends up being a lantern so dig gonna come through unfortunately with the debuff it's barely not going to two shot them but with the sand attack damage this second dig will be enough to take out the lantern and now we can very comfortably outpace this wigglytuff to the next dig and from this range the little hippo is going to be able to take out the wigglytuff and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there into the next game, we see Shadow Zapdos into Cresselia. Now I want to mention that I actually played uh, the previous opponent here, had almost the exact same team here with Cresselia, Whiskash, and then the third Pokemon was Lantern, although that opponent ended up unfortunately lagging out of the battle, so I didn't include that battle in the video. But I'm sort of playing with that team in mind, I thought maybe a content creator had featured that team, especially since I saw two of them back to back. So what we're going to do here, go for a drill pet, we tank the Scald, since of course uh, Scald's going to hit for a lot more damage. Up against my hippos in the back unfortunately they're going to get a debuff with that school there so we now can't just go for a resisted rock level we have to go for the scorching sands but i'm able to get rid of the whisk cash and it's probably going to be cresselia coming back in so they do come in with the Cresselia, Big Hippo can outpace them to the first charge move, although we have been debuffed in our attack, Scorching Sands does very little damage, and we don't get an attack drop in our own, so we are going to no shield, Grass Stop barely doesn't take us out, so I'm going to swap into the Little Hippo, I'm going to no shield the first move here, expecting it is going to be a Lantern in the bag, Grass Knot does some decent damage, but they've got very little fast move pressure, I'm not certain Dig would take them out from this range, so I'm actually going to shield here, continue to over farm, and I'm going to throw it once I get to 100 energy. Now, Body Slam is not going to be enough damage to get the KO, but what it will do is allow me to go for a full Sand Attack Farm down, but it wasn't a Lantern in the back. It ends up being Talonflame instead. So, unfortunately, we don't have Rock Weather Ball, but the opponent doesn't know that. I can go for another Body Slam here, hoping a third Body Slam will get the KO, but it doesn't look like it. So, I swap into the Big Hippo, and I'm just barely able to make it to the Rock Weather Ball. Rock Weather Ball hits for double super effective damage up against a Talonflame, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into next game we're going to see a Ferrothorn in the lead. So this is a bit of an awkward lead matchup. If the opponent does bait with a Power Whip, that will allow them to make it to a Thunder just before we make it to a third Drill Peck. So they will actually be able to win the one shield scenario. I'm just going to shield this here and the opponent is going to bait with the Power Whip. So we can make it to that second Drill Peck, but they will just narrowly outpace us to a third Charge Roof. So we go for the Drill Peck, they're going to throw straight away. At this point, I don't want to double shield the Zapdos. So I'm going to let it go through and it is a Thunder, it takes out the Zapdos. But we can come in with the Big Hippo, go for a Rock Weather Ball just before they make it to the next Power Whip. And the opponent's actually going to use a shield here. So at this point, I'm definitely going to shield as well. Kind of implying that they are weak to the Ground Typing in the back or maybe weak to Rock, I don't know. We're able to get the full farm down, but it's actually a Jellicent in the back. So what we're going to do is farm to when they get to three hexes, go for a Scorching Sands. Scorching Sands does big damage, and then we swap into the Little Hippo. I can, of course, tank one Surf fairly comfortably. I'm basically going to force the opponent to throw their energy straight away, but instead, they swap into Lantern, which is huge for me. We can now go for a Dig, and last time it was debuffed, but this time Dig does huge damage. We could get the knockout with the Body Sand, but actually, we're going to choose to just let the Little Hippo go down to the Surf 
because what that means is I can come in with the big hippo, get a huge farm down, come out with a scorching sands loaded. I knew they were one hex away, so I play it safe. I go for the over farm, taking them out with a scorching sands, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next game we're going to see a Shadow Alone and Sand Slash in the lead, so certainly not ideal. Gonna say swap into the Little Hippo, and unfortunately we do lose CMP here, but uh, once again the opponent might not know that we don't have Rock Weather Ball, so I just fire off the Body Sam straight away, and Body Sam will be coming through, it's gonna grab a shield from the opponent. So at this point I will actually be able to outpace them to the next charge move, of course Body Sam not gonna do much damage, but the opponent chooses to double shield, and that's absolutely fine with me. At this point I can safely let the Little Hippo go down, Ice Punch will be taking us out, but we put them into range where we can shield once and then farm them down with the big hippo. So that's exactly what we're going to go for. Of course, going to have to use my shield here. The opponent is going to go for a drill run for some reason. Doesn't make an awful lot of sense, but I'm able to get the sand attack farm down and let's see what the opponent wants to do. They're going to come in with a Mantine, so I'm going to go for a Rock Weather Ball here. I'm thinking Zapdos probably doesn't have play against their final Pokemon, so instead we're going to try and catch a Resistant Aerial Ace. It doesn't pan out that way as the opponent holds on to the energy, one-shots us with an Ice Beam. I'm now going to overfarm massively with the Hippowdon. I think with the Thundershock damage, this Rock Weather Ball does actually quite take them out there, but one more Sand Attack does the job, but unfortunately it's a poor team read on my end as they've got Annihilate in the back. If we just let the Hippowdon go down there, or should I say the big hippo go down there, I think we would have been fine because Zapdos could have very easily swept that team, but GG's to the opponent, really well played. Into next battle, we're going to see Drapion in the lead, so I'm going to swap into the little hippo, go for the dig as we will outpace them since of course we did swap and it took at least one fast move to respond there. We're now going to actually shield in this matchup here, and the reason for that is because Scald wouldn't quite take us out, but what I don't want to do is allow them to just fully mud shot farm me down, so instead we're going to go for a second dig here. Dig, not going to do that much damage, I mean, I mean, they shield anyways and that's fine with me and now the opponent's scald will be enough damage to take out the little hippo and they basically throw straight away not quite straight away so they will actually make it to a charge move up against my zapdos but that's okay i'm gonna no shield this we can tank this not particularly comfortably as we've already seen but we do tank it nonetheless we're gonna farm two nearly back to back drill pecs i wasn't quite sure if they'd make it to a mud bomb so drill peck takes out the whiskash and they've actually got a charge bug in the back and that's absolutely amazing for me big hippo is gonna have a field day up against the back line as we're going to shield up the Aquatel here we need to bait I think I don't think we're making it to two Scorching Sands before they make it to three Aquatels so we do bait Aquatel is super effective but it's not the hardest hitting move we should live it as it is non-stab and these poison stings are of course going to be resisted so we're now going to full send the Scorching Sands taking out the Shadow Drapion and I should just barely be able to outpace them to a Rock Weather Ball they're at the charge move now but I don't expect them to throw straight away so we can swap into our Shadow Zapdos I'm able to snipe them with the Drill Peck and drill peck from this range will be taken at the charger bug and I'm able to take that game. So GG still opponent there, internet's going to see Gligar in the lead, so this is a pretty decent matchup for us. We do resist everything they can throw, unless they are running Night Slash, but that's typically not the case. I'm going to no shield here, the opponent is just going to go straight for an airy lay, so that's fine with me. I'm going to farm two back-to-back -back charge moves I didn't throw there, and the opponent tries to make a catch. I do end up not throwing any energy, but what I also did was I like waited like three or four turns before I ended up swapping there. So uh, yes, I didn't throw the move, but I also did waste quite a few turns there, not really doing anything. And and unfortunately, that's going to allow this opponent to just barely outpace me to two surfs before I made it to the body slam and a dig. So we do shield once. We can now go for a full farm down with the little hippo. And now I'm going to go for a body slam. Body slam, not going to do an awful lot of damage here, but we can spam them very quickly. Already at number two of the body slams. And body slam number two is going to get them very low. They can't go for a full farm down because otherwise we will make it to a third body slam. And body slam puts them into farm down range. So the opponent has to throw a charge move at this point. Aerial Ace will be taking me out. I think they've got back-to-back -back moves, so I'm actually going to come in with the Shadow Hip out on here. The opponent goes for Aerial Ace, number two, but they've got a Chestnut in the back, and unfortunately, with two shields in play, I don't think Zapdos could have outpaced them to three Drill Pecs, so what I'm actually going to do is try to get a debuff to their attack, and we don't get that debuff. If we got the debuff, I think we probably could have forced a shield with a Weather Ball there. We already had two Drill Pecs loaded, but we only had one shield in play, so I figured if we got that one shield from the Chestnut before we went down, with the big hippo i think we could have won this but unfortunately we weren't able to get that shield they come out with tons of energy so of course whatever they throw here frenzy plant will be enough damage to take up the very glassy zapdos and unfortunately we end up losing that game 
but GG's to the opponent there. Internet's game greatly for us. Shadow Zapdos into Mantine. The opponent's going to say swap into Leaky Tongue, and I have to say, this is probably the worst game I've played at least all season, possibly of all time, if I'm honest here. You're going to see we go for the back-to-back -back drill pegs. That's fine. Nothing too out of the ordinary so far. But now we're going to swap into the Hippopotas or the Little Hippo. And I can live a Power Whip. So I'm actually going to no-shield the first move, hoping they bait. They don't end up baiting. And here you can see I underestimate their energy by one turn. So I'm not going to have to shield this up. I could have gone for the dig there. We're now going to continue to overfarm and I do it again. What am I doing? And now I'm just going to sacrifice the Hippo. With like nearly 100 energy there. What a waste that was. But now we can come in with the big hippo. I'm going to go for the full farm down. But then I panic. I'm like, you know what? I've already underestimated the energy several times. I'm just going to throw the rock weather ball there. Possibly could have gone for the full farm down. But at that point, I didn't want to take the risk. They're now going to come in with a shadow swamp up, which is quite interesting. We go for the scorching stands. We do get the attack drop, which is very nice. And we're going to throw on the CMP tie. The opponent is going to go for a hydro cannon, which will be enough to take out the hippo. But that's fine. We can come in with the shadow Zapdos. And what I'm thinking here is we should be able to live a resisted aerial ace. So as long as we throw straight away, I should be able to outpace them to a thunderbolt with my Zapdos up against the Mantine. So we take them out with the drill pack there. The opponent is going to come in with the Mantine. This is just an Aerial Ace. It is resisted damage. But Aerial Ace takes out the Shadow Zapdos and we end up losing that game. So GG's to that opponent there, possibly the worst play I've ever made up against that Leaky Tongue. But into the next battle, we're going to see Charger Bug in the lead, of course. We've got two ground types in the back, so we're going to swap into the Little Hippo. Going to attack this move here as the opponent going to go for an X-Scissor, and then they're going to swap into a Gligar. So they just guarantee, basically, that they can win switch advantage. We're now going to go for a Body Sam. You've seen already, Body Sam, not going to do too much damage here, but we can spam it very quickly. Second Body Sam already gets them into the Yellow Health range, and unless they go for Dig, we should live an Aerial Ace here. So the opponent it goes for the aerial ace we can make it to another body sam and this won't quite put them into farm down range unfortunately for my zapdos so it's a bit awkward here because of course they are very low but i'm still gonna have to throw a charge move to get rid of them so I'm going to take the first move. They go for Aerial Ace once again. So here we're going to go and throw the Drill Peg straight away. It ends up being a CMP tie. And Drill Peg will be taken out the Gligar. They come back in with the Charger Bug. We're going to come in with the Shadow Hippowd on here. And I'm going to shield the first move. I don't know what they've got in the back. But I'm just going to play it safe here. And we're now going to go for a Rock Weather Ball. Now Rock Weather Ball will not be enough damage to take out a Charger Bug from full health. But with the Sand Attack damage over time. If we're choosing both to double shield in this matchup. Then we should be able to get the KO here. But the opponent's actually got lantern in the back and i really did not need to shield a second x is because x is definitely does not put me into farm down range especially when they got two pokemon that only have electric type fast moves but either way we go for the rock weather ball there just to make sure we can swap out in time and the opponent is going to fire for charge move. they don't over farm too much and they actually full send a thunderbolt which is a huge mistake because now we can outpace them to the scorching sands scorching sands gonna hit for super effective damage taking out the lantern and shadow hippowdon can live an x is from this range so i'm gonna no shield we've got no shields anyway so i don't know why i said that but we can now make it to the rock weather ball and from this range it will be taken out of the charger bug and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there, into the next game we see Shadow Zapdos into Shadow Gligar. So once again, gonna completely wall the energy, but I'm gonna use the word wall lightly here because you're gonna see even a dig is gonna do like most of our hey, uh, most of our health. We go for the drill pick, does big damage to the Shadow Gligar, but you can see we're gonna no shield, they go for dig and that does more damage than the drill pick did. What on earth is going on right now? We're then going to safe swap into our Hippopotas, or the Little Hippo, and we're going to go straight for a Dig. So Dig is going to do some decent damage here. I think the opponent is going to have to full send a Scald. Otherwise, Icy Wind, I just don't think, will KO. And Icy Wind doesn't get the KO. I wasn't certain if I would make it to a Dig, so I play it safe. I go for the Body Sam. Body Sam will not get the KO, but what it will do is put them into farm down range for either Pokemon. And I figured, actually, I'm going to come in with my Shadow Hippowdon, go for the Sand Attack farm down, and let's see what the opponent wants to do they're going to come back in with the Gligar and once again they're not really in farm down range for either of my Pokemon which is very awkward but it's fine because the opponent just swaps into their carbink straight away and this should be game over we're going to go for a Scorching Sands here Scorching Sands doesn't get a debuff to their attack which is unfortunate I think it has the same odds it's basically the same move as school except it does five less uh, five less damage than school but that's okay unfortunately once again not getting a debuff with the Scorching Sands but it doesn't matter at this point we're able to make it to a third Scorching Sands before they reach a Moonblast and Scorching Sands doesn't quite get the KO but we're able to get the Sand Attack farm down and the opponent just concedes the match there. 
We did, of course, have a drill pack loaded on the Shadow Zapdos. GG's to the opponent, by the way. Into next battle, we're going to see a Vigoroth in the lead, and they're going to say swap into a Shadow Gligar. So once again, we are technically walling the Shadow Gligar, but you're going to see, once again, if they do full send a dig, that's going to do basically all of our HP. So we're going to no shield here. The opponent is going to go for the dig. So what I'm going to do is bank at least a Thunderbolt. Actually, no, I'm just going to go for the drill pack here. I've realized that I'm only making it to one charge move. Drill pack will get the KO. I don't think I could live a counter. So I just swap straight away into the little hippo. I'm going to no shield the first move here as the opponent goes for a body Sam. I think I am one fast move away from a charge move on my Shadow Zapdos. So I need something that I can resist heavily, like maybe mud shot or something like that, where I'm not going to take too much damage and make it to a charge move. But either way, going to save both my shields for the big hippo. I will be able to outpace this big off to the next charge move by one turn here as we come in. We're going to go straight for that rock weatherball. I don't know who wins CMP. I don't really want to find out either. So rock weatherball will be taking out the Vigoroth, but they've got a Trevenant in the back. So I need to do something pretty crazy right here. What I need to do is somehow swap, but one turn before they throw a charge move. So that way we come in with the Zapdos and then as they throw the charge move, we also get a fast move in for free. So that's basically my only win condition here because otherwise if I'm not able to do that, then I'm just going to lose. So what we're going to do is try to make that catch, but we're not able to do so. And at this point, we need to make it to two more charge moves to get that win. And unfortunately, we don't get there. So GG's to that opponent. Really well played. Into next game, we see a Whiskash in the lead. So Whiskash is very awkward here. Typically, they're going to shield the first move because Scald, of course, does have a chance to debuff my attack. But this one doesn't. They let it go through. And that's fine with me. I'm definitely still going to shield, though, because Scald, as we've seen a few times already, doesn't quite get the knockout, but it does get us incredibly low. So I definitely don't want that straight away. We can go for a second drill pack here. And I should be able to live this, although it's not guaranteed. But they actually bait with a Mud Bomb, so that's fine with me. We can now go for a drill pack here. And I think that might have been a CMP tie, so Drill Peck will be coming through. Doesn't quite get the knockout, but this is just going to be another Mud Bomb. We live the first one, and we are just barely able to live the second one, and even come out with a Drill Peck loaded, which is probably the best case scenario there. So we're going to fire that off straight away. No point swapping out there because, you know, I don't want to get switch locked or anything. They're going to come in with an Umbreon. I can tank very comfortably two charge moves doesn't matter what they throw foul play dark pulse last resort psychic whatever doesn't really matter i'm definitely just gonna be no shielding because shadow hippowdon does have slightly better coverage with that rock weather ball so once again gonna no shield here the opponent goes for a foul play and we are going to over farm and the opponent swaps into a shadow glygar so i'm gonna go straight for a body slam here i'm gonna make a little bit of energy and then swap straight away into my shadow hippowdon and i'm gonna let the first move go through as the opponent doesn't even build up to a dig of course airy lace not going to do as much damage as they dig, so I can just safely no shield the first move there. We can now go for a rock weather ball, dealing decent damage, but they are just barely able to outpace me to the next charge move. At this point, I'm going to shield this up, but I can't over farm too much because otherwise, I think we might be in snarl farm down range for the Umbreon. So we go for the rock weather ball, but we are probably in farm down range here. So I'm going to fire off the weather ball straight away. I realize my switch clock will now be up, so I swap back into the little hippo. We're able to make it to a body Sam before the opponent's able to react, and body. Sam takes out the Umbreon and I'm able to take that game. So GG to the opponent there into next game. We see Shadow Zapdos into Pelipper. So an amazing lead matchup for me. And the opponent's going to say swap into a charger bug. So that's fine with me as well. We can come in with our Shadow Hippowdon. Gonna no shield the first move here. And you're gonna see that X is a doesn't quite do half of our HP, but the Volt Switch damage has now got us into the other health range. So that means by the time they make it to the next X is a, I probably will have to respect the damage. But the opponent gonna over farm here. We go for the Rock Weather Ball number two, grabbing a shield from the opponent. And at this point, I am going to make sure I guarantee switch advantage here. And I'm actually able to make it to another Rock Weather Ball just before they make it to the next X is a, and Rock Weather Ball will be getting the KO up against the Charge Bug. And if they come back in with the Pelipper, I'm also going to be able to outpace them to the next next Rock Weather Ball, which is amazing for me. This will get them very low already, to the point where we can just Thunder Shock farm them down, and they go for a full farm down, allowing me to make it to yet another Rock Weather Ball. This grabs the final shield from the opponent. We know we can live anything they throw, so I'm going to no shield the first charge move here. I will then shield the second move coming from this Pelipper, and then we'll have to see what they've got in the back. The opponent goes for Weather Ball number two, but they've got Annihilate in the back, so unfortunately for them, this Drill Peck is going to do huge super effective damage. It takes out the Annihilate, and the little hit didn't need to do anything in this battle, but that's okay. Drill Peck will be taken out the Pelipper, and I'm able to take that game. 
So GG's to the opponent there in the next game. We see Shadow Zapdos into Dugong. So this is pretty bad for me. I did play out, I think, one game up against a Dugong previously. And I stayed in with the Zapdos. And they just basically fully farmed me down there. So that wasn't ideal. So instead, what we're going to do is swap into the Shadow Hippowdon. We do get the attack drop there. But they're still going to be able to fast move, farm me down before we make it to another Scorching Sands. So I end up going for the Rock Weather Ball. And the opponent can correctly no shield that. Just barely hanging on. And as well, this isn't a super comfortable fast move farm down for me either. I'm going to shield the first move. They go for Sludge Bomb, but they do make it to a second charge move. Hopefully, this is just a Leaf Blade. It is a Leaf Blade. It still does some decent damage considering it's resisted, and they were debuffed. At this point, I'm just going to full send the Thunderbolt. My only win condition is if they know Shield, or if I swap out here and the opponent swaps into something very weak to the Little Hippo, but that's not the case either. So the opponent goes for an Icy Wind. They've got Annihilate in the back, and we're debuffed. So this dig already wasn't enough damage to get the KO, but now it barely does half their health. We will just barely make it to a body sam i don't really know why i'm throwing here this is just going to do nothing it's double resisted it's also debuffed the opponent comes out with a ton of loaded energy so finally i will just concede the match by letting a night sash take out my shadow zapdos and unfortunately we do lose that game but GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see another Shadow Gligar in the lead. So at this point, I'm probably going to start shielding. Oh, well, actually, no, never mind. They don't farm to the dig this time, so I definitely can live an airy lace reasonably comfortably. And then I'm going to go for a drill peck here, and I was thinking about throwing the next one straight away. But instead, I'm going to try and throw on the CMP tie, and unfortunately, this time, it does get caught onto a lantern. So drill peck, not going to do much damage there. We're going to swap straight away. Unfortunately, we do get a one-turn swap, so they're able to outpace me to the surf. I'm actually going to shield this first. First move here and that way I can then go and over farm massively and then I will throw a dig just before they make it to the next surf dig will be coming through dig grabs the shield there and actually I'm just gonna throw a body slam straight away I know this will not do enough damage to get the KO but they're basically gonna have to swap out straight away otherwise I can go for a full sand attack farm down and the opponent does swap out they swap back into the shadow Gligar I'm gonna no shield airy lace will get the KO but we can come back in with our shadow Zapdos and go for a drill peck on the scene Tie. So Drill Peck will be coming through. It barely doesn't get the KO, but that might be better for me as now we can get an energy advantage on the big hippo. Aerial Ace does take us out. We get the Sand Attack farm down and let's see what they've got in the back. They've got another Annihilate in the back, but this time it's not going to be a debuffed little hippo. It is a fully attack weighted Shadow Hippowdon. We can go for the Scorching Sands and at this point, honestly, we can just go for a full Sand Attack farm down before they make it to the next charge move and the opponent is just going to concede the match there. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see another Whiskash in the lead. This time it's a Shadow, so this is a lot scarier for us because I don't think we're going to live a Scald. Um, we might just barely live it from full health. By the time they make it to two charges, though, Scald is definitely going to be enough damage to get the KO. So we're going to shield the first move here. They go for the Scald, and we are going to overfarm in this matchup, go for the Drill Peck. And I also believe, I think in this matchup, the opponent lagged by one turn at the start of the battle, but they're going to shield their Whiskash here. So at this point, I'm also going to double shield my Shadow Zapdos hoping to just get rid of the Whiskash here. And we're going to fire off a draw peck just before they make it to the next Scald. They're going to double shield as well, so I'm realizing they are probably very weak to Zapdos in the back. So I'm actually just going to fully sacrifice the Little Hippo. Scald barely doesn't get the KO there. And I will actually be able to make it to a Body Sam up against the Shadow Whiskash. So Body Sam will get the KO. And the opponent's going to come in with a Skarmory. So, of course, keeping my Zapdos alive was very, very useful in this matchup now. Because otherwise, Skarmory, bit of an issue for my back line. Of course, Hippowdon does at least have Rock Weather Ball. So, for neutral damage. But a Thunderbolt is easily enough damage to take out the Skarmory. But they've got a Shadow Tentacle in the back. And that is awful for me. I'm only able to make it to a Drill Peck. Drill Peck does big damage. But it's not quite going to put them into Sand Attack Farm Down range. And because this is Shadow on Shadow, Scald will be enough damage to take out the big hippo and unfortunately we do lose that game but GG's to the opponent there. Internet's getting great lead matchup for me. The opponent's going to say swap into Umbreon. So I'm actually going to stay in. Fire off a drill peck after six Thunder Shocks, which is good timing since it takes one turn for the opponent to swap out there. And now after landing pretty big damage with a drill peck, I feel like I should be able to maintain alignment in this matchup here or at least, you know, grab a shield advantage or something. So I'm going to let both moves go through. Hippopotas is able to tank it fairly comfortably, and we can go for a dig. Now, dig 
isn't quite going to be enough damage to get the KO here, but I will be able to make it to a body slam on the CMP Titan. Now, actually, I think I would prefer if the opponent shields, and they do shield, and that's fine with me. I'm now going to no shield. I realize that if they come in with the Jellison, if they get a big farm down up against the Hippopotas, then I don't really know what I'm going to do because, of course, Zapdos can't really tank hits, and, of course, Surf is going to be super effective up against the big Hippo. But either way, we're able to lose switch advantage, but have a shield advantage, and it looks like they're core broken by the Zapdos anyways, and they Thunderbolt one-shots them, and they've got Shiny Shadow Venusaur in the back, so this is game over. We can go straight for the Drill Peck. Drill Peck takes out the Venusaur, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, I definitely think from the opponent's perspective, since they knew that they were core broken by the Zapdos, I don't think fighting for switch advantage really mattered there. I think they needed an energy advantage on either the Venusaur or the Jellicent going into that Zapdos matchup. But either way, into next battle, we're going to see a Giratina in the lead. So we go for the Drill Peck straight away, and then unfortunately going to shield an Ominous Wind Bait. We're going to go for the Dig here. This is, of course, not going to be double resisted like the Body Slam is, but it doesn't do enough damage to threaten a shield. And as well, the opponent is going to go and full send the Shadow Ball this time around. Can we at least make it to a Body Slam? The answer is no. They get the full farm down. And what that means is I won't be able to farm them down before they make it to a Shadow Ball which is going to be agonizing because they were just at one HP remaining. So very unfortunate, but Shadow Ball grabs my final shield. We get the farm down. But the opponent is going to come in with a Shadow Giraffe Rig, which is a very spicy pick here. I think I actually battled this opponent a few days ago. I was running a team that unfortunately just didn't do very well, so it didn't even make it into a video. They absolutely destroyed me with this team. But Psychic Fangs, not going to do too much damage here. We swap into our Shadow Zapdos that banks some energy on my Shadow Hippowdon. But Psychic Fangs does big damage, and they come in with a wiggly tough. So at this point, this is certainly game over. Scorching Sands would not get the KO. So I just let them take me out with the charm damage, and unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's to the opponent there. Either that or is uh, just a pretty common team, which is kind of strange because I've only seen it twice. But anyways, we're going to go for a drill peck up against the Whiskash straight away. Going to shield the first move as I always do up against Whiskash. They're never going to bait because of course Scald fishing for a debuff to our attack means that they're always going to throw that Scald there. We go for the drill peck. Drill peck does some decent damage. I have lived Scald a few times. So I'm going to no shield here. But this time Scald actually gets the KO and that is awful for me. So what we're going to do here is come in with the little hippo. The opponent's going to swap out straight away into Gligar. So that's not too bad for us. I'm just going to spam these body slams here. I'm thinking maybe they've got double flying in the back. So I'm definitely going to save my Hippowdon because, of course, Rock Weatherball is going to be more useful up against different flying type Pokemon. Here, we're going to go for another body slam. And the opponent is going to have to go for a dig to get the KO here. Because if they go for another aerial ace, which I think this is just going to be another aerial ace, then we can afford to live it. So going to let that go through there. I'm going to go for a body slam. But I think I'm actually going to undercharge this just slightly to get a sand attack farm down on my Hippowdon. But the opponent's also going to swap straight away. They swap into a Mantine, and now this is just going to be very close here. It depends. If the opponent goes for an airy lace bait, they will outpace me to the Ice Beam, but if they don't bait, if they go straight for the Ice Beam, then I think I should, if I throw it on good timing, make it to two Weather Balls just before they get there. So, we go for the first Weather Ball. Weather Ball is going to grab the shield, and we are barely able to make it to another Weather Ball, winning the CMP tie. Rock Weather Ball will be enough damage to take out the Mantine, and my Switch Clock is barely not up yet. We're able to swap, make a catch onto our little hippo and at this point all i've got to do is make sure the opponent doesn't make a catch here so i over farm but they make the catch anyways what a play from the opponent the opponent says anything you can do i can do better but it's still gonna be close and we're still able to make it to a rock weather ball honestly i don't even know why i went for the scorching sands there that was definitely overkill but rock weather ball takes out the whiz cash incredibly close game but ggs to that opponent there into next battle, huge core breaker for the team. Of course, Zapdos does hit full super effective damage with the drill pecs, though. So I'm going to fire off the first one. I'm not going to swap out yet, but unfortunately, the opponent could just double shield and then fully farm me down. And that is going to be the absolute worst case scenario. So I don't want to give them any extra farm. So we swap into Shadow Hippowdon. Honestly, probably a mistake. I could have, I should have come in with the little hippo. That way, I could at least tank one charge for you because you can see Icy Wind is going to do a lot more damage there than up against the Hippopotas. But either way, we're going to go for a Scorching Sands. We're 
double debuff. It doesn't do much damage. We also don't get an attack drop either, so that's not great. We're going to now wait out a switch clock, come in with the little hippo. Of course, going to have to take the first charge move coming from the Vigoroth, but I'm hoping I can then go and catch the next charge move, and I swap straight away. I'm able to make the catch here. Even if they undercharge this, Body Sam will still get the KO, and I can overfarm massively in this matchup, but I think we're just too low in our HP right now. We go for the Body Sam. Body Sam takes out the Vigoroth. But I need two body slams to get the KO up against the Shadow of Bomber Snow. But also, I need something very weak to the ground typing in the back. But you can see, body slam will not get the KO. They also outpace me just barely to the next Icy Wind. Icy Wind will be taking us out there. No point shielding because they debuff my attack. And then body slam will do even less damage. But GG's to that opponent there. Into next, gonna see Lantern in the lead, so I'm gonna swap straight away into the Little Hippo, and the opponent's just gonna fire off a Surf immediately. Now, unfortunately, because we swap out there, I'm not able to outpace them to the first charge move, and also they come in with Talonflame. Obviously, the Big Hippo has great coverage here, and the opponent actually does no shield this time, either knowing that we don't have Rock Weather Ball, or just hoping that we didn't have it. But either way, if the opponent goes for a full farm down, we can actually make it to another Body Slam in time before they get there, and the opponent's just gonna fully sacrifice the Talonflame, coming back in with the Lantern, but I'm still able to make it to a body slam. Now, if the opponent has been counting, they are just going to no shield. It is just a body slam. They can tank that fairly well, but this time I'm definitely going to be shielding here as the opponent is going to go for that surf there. And the opponent is now going to swap into a Shadow Hypno, a Pokemon you don't really see too often these days. But what we're going to do is go for that Scorching Sands. Scorching Sands doesn't get an attack drop, unfortunately. Actually, no, it does get an attack drop. You just don't see it straight away. Very confusing. I don't know why they haven't fixed the visuals yet, but very weird. And luckily for me, they're running Fire Punch as their Elemental Punch. Don't know if that means that they're also running like a um, I don't know, Thunder Punch or Shadow Ball or Focus Blast. Not really certain here, but I think my only win condition really is no shielding and calling another Fire Punch bait, and it is the Fire Punch. They then swap back into Lantern. I can now put them into range where Rock Weather Ball will be enough damage to get the KO, and now I will be able to make it to a Scorching Sands. We throw it on horrible timing, but it doesn't matter. Scorching Sands is enough to take out the Shadow Hypno, and I'm able to take that game. So GG to the opponent there into the next battle, possibly the final battle of this video. We need into Gudra, so not great for us, but I'm going to go for a drill peck straight away, and then I will just swap into my Hippopotas. We go for the draw back there, gonna swap out, and honestly, if they threw straight away, I probably would just no shield, but now they've farmed up to a potential power whip, I'm gonna have to respect the damage. They go for the Aquatel bait though. I'm now gonna full send a dig here. Dig, not gonna hit too hard, and the opponent can live that. They will just barely outpace me to the next charge, with really good charge move timing as well. Not sure if it was intentional or if they got lucky, but either way, they take me out just as we reach a body Sam, so nicely done there from the Gudra. But we can come in, get the sand attack farm down, and let's see what the opponent wants to do. The opponent's going to come in with a Shadow alone in Sand Slash, and this actually isn't too bad for us whatsoever. I'm going to overfarm massively here. The opponent also choosing to overfarm. We go for the Weather Ball, and by the time we make it to the next Weather Ball, I think it would be enough damage to get the KO. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm reading that they are double weak to the Hippowdon in the back. So we swap into Zapdos. We make the catch, and there is the other Pokemon weak to the ground typing. It's going to be a Lantern. We go straight for the Scorching Sands. Scorching Sands doesn't quite get the KO, but I'm able to throw a Rock. Rock Weather Ball on the CMP tie. Rock Weather Ball does get the KO, and now I will very comfortably outpace them to the third Rock Weather Ball, and this will of course be enough damage to take out the Sand Slash, and I'm able to take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know, and as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shoutouts at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges, and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day